AMD has to delay their CPUs, because of course they do. Apple is making their phones more repairable, and the X3D chips are going to the next level. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, July 1st, 2024. Second half of the year, baby, let's go. We'll see if AMD even launches their CPUs in this second half of the year, because we just got the announcement that the AI 300 series AI 9, Oh, every time I have to read it, it's so bad. It's so, I, like, I can't even remember it. That's the worst part is I'm like, okay, we've got the 9000 series is the desktop 9950X, this makes sense. And then on laptop, we're getting the 88, nope, that's not 98, no, that's, it's AI something. What's it called? The AI 300, because it's their third generation, but they actually only put XDNA 2 into it, so that doesn't even make a lick of sense. I, I can't, I can't get it into my brain noggin that this is called the HX300, AI300. I already messed it up. July 28th is when it's supposed to be coming out. It's supposed to come out originally July 15th and now it's being delayed by about two weeks. This is not unprecedented for AMD, especially on the mobile department. They have continuously missed the mark when it comes to actually releasing their laptop chips when they're supposed to. You could see this last year when the 7000 series was supposed to come out. They announced it at CES in January and then it got delay after delay. It was supposed to be the first half of the year, didn't make that. And then it barely launched at some point in Q3. And while July 28th is allegedly when it's supposed to be coming out based on both Best Buy's data, as well as reports from behind the scene that July 28th is when the reviews are supposed to come out. Don't necessarily trust it. AMD might say that they're ready, but they have proven at least with their laptop track record that uh, they don't necessarily have the ability to make the dates that they say that they're going to. In case you're waiting for the AM4 CPUs, the 5800 XT and the 5900 XT, which are gonna be on the B450, B550 motherboards, that's supposed to be launching at the same time as Ryzen 9000, July 31st. You can wait till then, that's when you're supposed to be getting it. But price point, according to at least one retailer in Slovenia, it's gonna be cheaper than the Ryzen 7000, which is something we haven't seen AMD do in quite a few generations, which either is pointing to general macroeconomic trends that people don't wanna pay as much for their CPUs, it could be pointing to the fact that they think Intel might actually have some legitimate competition coming out with Arrow Lake, or uh, they're just nice people who don't necessarily wanna take all the profit for their shareholders that, yeah, everybody wants. Who knows? We'll find out uh, eventually when they talk about it later. But according to the Slovenian retailer, each one of the product stacks is supposed to be cheaper than the Ryzen 7000 series when it came out. In fact, the 9950X is supposed to launch at a price point that's cheaper than the 7900X or 7900X 3D when those came out. So getting priced down just slightly and being more than obviously what 7000 costs right now because there's been sales and discounts and pricing reductions on those chips. So in case you want to get a 7800X 3D because of how much those are discounted right now, it could potentially make sense, especially with reports that the 9700 X isn't going to quite match the 7800X 3D, but price drops, I'm here for it. Good news, lower prices, better pizza, better deals from Reese. Let's see what he has. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And hey, look at that, right over there, some deals. First up, we have the Raid Max Sound On X USB microphone going for only $24.99, making it $35 off. But then next up, we have the HyperX Cloud X gaming headset. Why are there so many X's in these products? Going for only $35.99 with the coupon applied, making it $34 off. And then lastly, we have this Mountain Everest Max mechanical keyboard plus all the modular add-ons. It's got little Stream Deck-like buttons and a display on it, currently going for only $99.99, but there is a promo code for $110 off, so I don't know if that's gonna work or not, see if you can game the system. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below, but until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, Apple has a good deal for you if you're trying to get your iPhone repaired at a third-party repair shop. They're gonna stop taking taking away features. Yes, they're gonna stop enforcing stupid arbitrary nonsense that they've been doing for a little while. In their latest uh, pat on the back report called Longevity by Design or a white paper on the repairability and how long their iPhones last, especially compared to Android, they did announce a few key upgrades to the repair setup in that both True Tone, which is when you can actually change the color temperature on your <laughs> screen and battery health data are now going to be supported for third party repairs. I'm not talking about third party 
repair parts, just a third party repair store that doesn't have access to Apple's internal systems. Even if they use legitimate Apple parts, Apple strips the stuff of its features. Now this isn't applying to the whole host of other ways that Apple does this type of behavior. But now True Tone with more accurate colors and knowing what battery percentage you have is going to be enabled in case you wanted to go for the more affordable or even yourself option. And in case you went for the option of buying a Fisker Ocean, oh boy. Uh, not only is the company bankrupt, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, it seems to have been brought on by the fact that they made really poor vehicles and then that got disseminated by MKBHD talking about how, hey, this is the worst vehicle it's ever reviewed. But now on top of that, every single one of these vehicles, despite the fact that the company's in bankruptcy, is being recalled because the doors don't work. The door handles may not budge or uh, allow you to get in or out which is terrifying especially in a ev situation where if those catch on fire you desperately need to get out very quickly um mm, not not good if you bought a fisker ocean i am so sorry but in case you're waiting for the x3d variants of amd's chips i'm not sorry because we got some details coming out from wccf deck indicating that these are going to be unlocked to a new level so it was in a previous interview that one of amd's heads said that the x3d variant for 9000 is going to be different they're going to be making some changes and now we have some at least indication of how some of those are going to be rolled out this might not be the full story but these new 9000 x3d chips should allegedly support full manual overclocking where you can push them beyond where AMD ships them out of the box. And this is beyond the precision boost overdrive that's currently enabled on the 7000 X3D series, which was not present on the 5000 X3D series. So it seems like every generation, AMD is adding some sort of overclocking tunability to the CPUs, potentially making it so that you can get more bang for your money out of what you purchase. So 5000 series supported memory overclocking, 7000 series had PBO with memory overclocking and now 9000 should have that memory OC PBO in case you just want auto overclocking out of the box and 9000 X3D should have manual overclocking with allegedly some safeguards probably with regards to voltage we saw what happened when the 7800 X3D launch started exploding because the motherboards were giving it the wrong voltage you do not want that to happen so having that locked off a little bit does make sense to prevent RMA or just any sort of uh, public outcry with regards to the CPU so this is cool also allegedly could support up to nine to ten thousand mega transfer ram which is insanely fast and could make it so that you can get a lot of power out of these 9000 x3d chips now again this might not be everything that we're expecting from it i personally even though i have not a shred of evidence for this am hoping that with the Ryzen 9 x3d chips this 9900 x3d 9950 x3d they have vcache on both of the CCDs so that you don't have to do any core parking. That would be fantastic. I don't even care if it's a lesser amount. I just want it, I want it equally split so that I don't even have to think about it. That would be fantastic and make it a much more compelling option for PC builds and uh, high-end gaming systems in the future. And you guys compelled me to read your comments from all of the weekend's videos, as well as uh, the hot news we put out on Friday. On YouTube, CMJ saying, in low economy countries, almost all customers just want an under 100 US SD gaming GPU like an RX 588 gig. Why is there no company satisfying that market? I mean, let's take a look at how AMD, Nvidia, and Intel are incentivized to sell these things. Under $100 GPUs, it costs a lot to make those, right? Like the 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 cost of those GPUs is still kind of expensive. And so they're not making that much profit off of those. That can be subsidized by the profit that they're making off of a 7900 XTX or an RTX 4090 or whatever freaking data center GPUs that they're selling that allows them to have basically no margin, no profit that they're making off of those GPUs and selling them. But when you have that, even what is that small profit margin being eaten from the underneath by integrated GPUs, it makes it difficult because you're being squeezed from the top where you can just actually sell the more profitable higher end stuff. And then you're being squeezed from the bottom where it's just all baked in. And anybody who wants that performance can actually buy a full CPU with everything and Involved, and so it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. NVIDIA doesn't need to compete in that market because they're making profit everywhere else. The amount of profit you're making when you're selling something like the successor to the RX 580 in a Polaris is just not that much, which is why they don't launch those first. They have to launch the more expensive cards first. Everybody who wants the cheaper card has to wait for them to come out so that the companies can make their money from the people who are actually gonna pay them 
it's just, it seems to be pure economics as to why that's happening, which is why I, I iGPUs are probably gonna be the budget gaming of the future. That's just how I see things happening. And then we got the five gen saying, long gone are the days when we had four graphics card manufacturers, S3, ATI, 3DFX, NVIDIA competing against each other. Intel really needs to be that third player to apply pressure to NVIDIA and AMD. Did you just wake up from the ice, my guy? You, you slumbering for a little while? We long gone? Long gone? Yeah, real long gone. Decades, there are, there are children who became adults when it wasn't this way, right? Like they have, they're holding steady jobs in corporate America since we had four GPU companies. That's an ancient reference. Go get your prostate check, my friend. And then over on Floatplane for the weekend video where Kyler installed a giganto battery into the ROG Ally, we got Northern Llama saying, awesome guide. Important question though, what music is the Kyle listening to while he stares at the Hogwarts guy for two plus hours? He was doing other stuff while that happened, but in case you wanna know what type of music Kyler listens to, uh, it's like, Midwest emo. I don't listen to it, so I'm not familiar with all of the like bands. I, I think one's uh, Mom Jeans, Backyard Baseball, Modern Baseball, something like that. Uh, Hot Mulligan, I think. He, he also listens to like everything. Kyler Kyler is not necessarily, has boundaries when it comes to what music he, he enjoys. He'll listen to essentially everything, but that's whenever he's driven me around, it has been like mom jeans playing on his uh, on his phone. And the kryptonite saying, love these kind of mods. I agree. Then over on YouTube, we got Shauner saying, for a black hole, Kyler's getting pretty good at hosting. I agree. I thought it was a pretty good video. Z-Shring saying, I think it's cool, Kyler, I promise. My dad is still confused, but says, hey, back. And then Dave saying, Kyler is a walking, talking, Rick and Morty interdimensional cable show. It's a good video. You should definitely check it out. We had a whole bunch of videos come out over the weekend um, simply because uh, there's been a lot going on behind the scenes in terms of uh, my personal life that has made it difficult for me to get videos done. And then we had like uh, deadlines and sponsorship agreements of things that had to go live by the end of the quarter. And so that's like, there was a barrage of like, I had to pull some really late nights um, in order to get those videos out. So I appreciate everybody who watched them. I'm we're, we're working to try to make sure that that like, videos get staggered um, and more spaced out in the future. But I'm spacing out on this episode of Hot News, so I'll see you back here with more of the Haas Tech News tomorrow, my friends.